There is an animal with acceleration faster than a Porsche, McLaren or Ferrari. 0 to 70 kilometers per hour in just two seconds. That's right, when it comes to pure acceleration from a standing start, a cheetah can embarrass top dollar supercars. The cheetah can also do a 90 degree turn at 100 kilometers per hour. Unfortunately, as a species, this world's fastest land animal is living right on the edge of extinction. Join Kezia from Kenya, Casilla from Brazil, and Gubby from Germany as they also encounter an animal with a particularly bad reputation. They come face to face with mighty four meter Nile crocodiles during a cage dive. These three adventurers also spend time with a python, to the delight of some, but not all. <laughs> It's not every day that you get the opportunity to walk inside a crocodile's mouth. But here at Kango Wildlife Ranch, we get close enough to be able to count his teeth live. Come with me and let's experience all this and much more. In 1977, the Kango Crocodile Farm was born as South Africa's first crocodile show farm. The new management felt they could do even more for conservation and decided to get actively involved with the plight of the endangered cheetah and so cheetah land was also established. The Kanga Wildlife Ranch is today home to more than 47 species of animals and reptiles. Early mornings and late afternoons, these guys are very active, playing and running. And by the middle of the day, they do what cats, cats do best, be, being lazy and sleepy. Yeah. So, this is one of the females, her name is Lisha. This is, what, this is the boy, his name is Luigi. And the other one's name is Lily. Hey, Lily. It's very playful, eh? <laughs> the Kango Wildlife Ranch is renowned for its far-reaching efforts in the conservation of the cheetah and has bred over 200 cheetahs in captivity since 1982. The cheetahs on display at the ranch have all been hand-reared, which allows visitors, 16 years and older, to enter the cheetah enclosure for a face-to-face -face meeting. In this way, they are able to educate the public on a personal level about the plight of the cheetah. The cheetah the world's fastest land mammal is the most uniquely specialized member of the cat family and is able to reach speeds of 110 kilometers per hour. The cheetah's leaner body and longer legs distinguishes it from other cats as the greyhound's features distinguish it from other dogs. Comparatively speaking, it is not an aggressive animal and prefers flight rather than fight. It has weaker jaws and smaller teeth so it cannot fight larger predators when needing to protect its kills or young. Cheetahs are affectionate and nurturing mothers. They spend a long time raising their cubs and teach them all the skills they need to survive, including hunting. Cheetah cubs are blind and completely helpless at birth, but they develop quickly. Their eyes open and they begin to crawl around the nursery when they're just four to ten days old. Preempting the threat from numerous types of predators, the mother moves her cubs to a different den every few days. 
She has to leave her cubs alone much of the time in order to hunt during their first six weeks, often traversing many kilometers in search of food. During this time, as much as 90% of cubs in the wild are lost to predators. It's what we call a night house. So we got a red piggy light in here to, to keep them warm at night. So, and we also got what we call a bedding here. So it's also nice and soft for them to keep them warm inside here. Yeah. At six weeks, cubs often begin to follow the mother and start to eat meat from her kills. Mother and cubs then remain inseparable until the cubs are weaned. Well, it's, it's very easy to tell them apart because I've been working with them since they were yeah, youngsters. But some, 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 some different cut. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the simple one. We'll see. This is Jordan. He's got the big white tip at the tail. We'll see that one. George has got the small white tip at the tail. Mm -hmm. And as we'll see as well, Jordan, his spots are more close to each other, and George's spots are far apart from each other as well. And George is slightly bigger than Jordan as well. It's very easy to tell them apart. Because we are not used to, so when we look, looks like <laughs> very similar. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, yeah. But once we work with them, yeah. they don't they don't look the same at all. Even their behavior is as well. Yeah. As Josh is more like short tempered. Jordan is very good with people. Oh. Even when we walk them around, he's very good. Who is short tempered? Josh. Yeah. At times he's like get easily irritated, but Jordan is much. He's chill. He's he's a good boy. He's my favorite. It has been estimated that in 1900, more than 100,000 cheetahs were to be found in at least 44 countries throughout Africa and Asia. Today, the species is extinct from more than 20 countries, and that only about 10,000 animals remain, found mostly in small pocketed populations. The mission of Kango Wildlife Ranch is to save animals such as the cheetah from extinction and to educate people on the vulnerability and importance of our wildlife. One tragic fact is undeniable. Extinction is forever. The crocodile species that we have in here, this is the common African Nile crocodile. Now the Nile crocodile one stage was found throughout the entire continent of Africa. And this is the animal with a bad reputation. You get a crocodile out in the wild, two things in your mind. Run. The other one, get away. Now this is where all the fun starts. Crocodile cage diving. A world's first. The idea is of course, to once you're in the cage, we lure you down. The water is clear, it's clean, swimming pool conditions. The water temperature, that's what a lot of people want to know. We keep them about 20, 23 degrees Celsius, and it is not that deep. So you don't need to be a qualified diver to do this. It's a simple technique. Hold your breath, go under, have a good look, and come up again. And if, now, once in the water, if the crocs do not approach you, if they do not swim towards the cage, we operate the crane, we'll take you to them. We'll get you so close, you won't be able to count their teeth. I cannot believe I'm doing this. As our guide said, this is the animal with the bad reputation. So there's three of them, eh? Yeah. Yes. Hannibal, Marbaker, and Sue. It almost seems as if they're trying to figure out how to get to us. I can just see it written all over their faces. How do I get in? 
There must be a way. I'm sure there's a way. Just a few days ago, I was in a shark cage diving with the feared great white sharks. I must say, the sharks were not at all interested in eating us. They simply just swam past us, and they were eager to get a hold of the fish. These crocodiles are different. It seems clear that they want to eat us. A crocodile's jaws can apply a pressure of two tons per square centimeter. Just by closing its jaws, it will easily break a person's ribs and spine. Crocodiles only use four muscles to open their jaws and 40 muscles to close their jaws. It is so close to being the perfect predator. This animal can leap with three quarters of its body out of the water. It then bites the prey, drags it back into the water and does the death roll. Crocodiles can stay submerged for up to one hour and drowning is therefore another method they use to kill their prey. It is difficult to tell the age of a crocodile because they replace their teeth every two years. In an average life, they have 45 sets of new teeth. They have 66 teeth. 36 in the upper jaw and 30 in the lower jaw. The average lifespan of a crocodile is between 90 to 100 years. They keep on growing and reproducing until the day they die. The crocodile is the reptile with the biggest brain and also the only reptile with a four-chambered heart. In this respect, the same as humans. We started training recently um, just to do things that we need them to do here at the ranch, which is to um, rise on command, sink on command, um, and then we'll be teaching them to, to go forward, backwards, left, stop, right. Um, yeah, so those will be the initial basic training. And then uh, I'm hoping to do something a little more advanced as time goes on, um, just to show people that they are intelligent and they are able to learn. Um, certainly they are able to recognize their names. We do feed them with fish, chicken, any kinds of red meat. On special occasions, birthdays, anniversaries, they get difficult tourists. <laughs> At Kango Wildlife Ranch, crocodiles are fed two to three times per week in summer. But in the winter, they receive no food at all, resembling the pattern in nature. Crocodiles are reptiles, and so are cold-blooded animals. Their body temperature depends on the environment, so the colder it gets, the slower the body functions. If it's too cold, they simply cannot digest their food. Crocodiles do not have a hibernation period, and therefore there is no winter sleep, but their metabolism slows down along with their heart rate. Here they don't hunt, we feed them. But if we're going to throw the meat towards them, they'll eat, they'll sleep, no exercise at all. At least this way, they're swimming towards the jetty. Once they get here, it's some physical exercise. They're using the tail, they leap quite high out of the water. So we are stimulating the brains, we're stimulating the muscles, we're giving them some real physical exercise, rather than just eating and going back to sleep. And we have four of them right here, all ready to jump. Here we go. Come up. Come up. Up, 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 up. Here we go. This one there. Come up here. Up, 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 up. Come, come. Go. This is our last one. So who's going to get it? Who's going to get the last one? Who's going to get the last one? Come, girls. Come, girls. Come on. 
Come up, 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 yes, you can do better, higher, higher, up, 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 ah, here we go, all righty. Here we go. Woo! your hand there as well, so you can grab a tail if you have to, and then also to close a loop here if you have to. Okay. All right, but obviously that will be your best shot. The mating season of crocodiles takes place once per year. Internal fertilization takes place in the water. Two weeks later, the mother digs a hole and deposits on average 45 eggs. The eggs hatch after 90 days. Shortly before hatching, baby crocodiles make noises within their eggs. These calls from the egg tell siblings it's time to hatch and tell moms it's time to uncover the nest. Once the nest is uncovered, the mother carries the babies to the safety of the water. Dá uma olhada nos olhos dele, que coisa mais magnífica. All of the tiger species left in the world are endangered. There are fewer than 3,000 Bengal tigers left. At Kanga Wildlife Ranch, the Bengal tiger breeding program has been very successful. These animals serve as a flagship for their species, highlighting the importance of their dire need to be conserved. So this is Prickles, he's an African porcupine, or Cape porcupine. It's the largest rodent we have in South Africa. Um, here we feed him a variety of vegetables. His favorite is beetroot, so normally his beetroot he eats first, so there's no evidence of it anymore. But uh, he's got his sweet potatoes and squash, um, cabbage he likes. Um, likes something with a slight salt content to it as well. But yeah, sadly, a lot of um, farming types um, see them as vermin. You know, they uh, obviously raid crops and things like that. So whenever there's competition of food with humans, and sadly, the animals usually end up worse. Snakes have a huge amount of myths about them. Uh, lots of myths, lots of folk stories, lots of old wives' tales, which sadly are, um, to you know, the, the greater point, completely untrue. There's a tiny amount of fact which is taken and uh, blown completely out of proportion with them. Snakes are massively, massively necessary in the environment. Um, one individual, if you look at the smaller species, so any snake that's under two meters in length is, is classed as a smaller snake, um, that will eat well over 3,000 rodents in its lifetime. It's uh, been researched and uh, those 3,000, of course, would have reproduced and, you know, uh, created more and more uh, rodents and a greater population. So uh, they're hugely, hugely useful. Um, very, very few spitting snakes around. Um, none of the snakes we have here at the park are um, spitters. But spitting snakes, of course, um, again, it's purely defensive. Um, it's in an effort to try and avoid biting us. So they would, again, rear up. Typically cobras, they would rear up. They would... Um, uh, try and make a hood, make themselves as big and as obvious as they possibly could. They would uh, uh, spray venom at us. Um, typically we would, um, the idea is to get it in our eyes so that it would keep us busy or keep the attacker busy rather. Um, of course snakes have many natural predators and while the animal is kept busy the snake can make its escape so thereby avoiding any further damage to the, uh, the predator. Um, so they really do try extremely hard to, to avoid um, biting us. Of course, your rattlesnakes, um, they've got their rattles, um, they shake, you've got um, many, many snakes hiss. Um, there's a few snakes which are unable to hiss, like the egg-eating snake, for example, which has then uh, very, very rough scales, keeled scales, and they actually rub their skin together to create a rasping, a hissing sound. Um, so these animals really do go out their way to, to try and avoid any damage to us. Yeah. The um, frequency of snake bites is extremely, extremely rare. 
Um, most bites occurring where people are trying to kill them. Um, there's very, very few accidental bites where um, a snake has been trodden on and delivered a venomous bite. Um, if it is a venomous snake, and of course there's a very small percentage of venomous snakes uh, worldwide, um, usually the snake will bite and uh, deliver what we call a dry bite because they have complete control over their venom glands. So they decide how much or how little venom they inject. Um, so again, as long as they're not provoked, then they will leave us alone. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. No. no, I'm not ready. It's 100% sure that the worst experience for me was to touch a snake. <laughs> I'm actually from the north of Brazil and uh, in the north of Brazil, near to the Amazon, we respect the snakes, snakes are there in their place, in their environment. We don't go there, we don't touch. It's kind of animal that you don't touch and period. <laughs> And for me, it was the worst thing, see the, the sun looking at me and the, the tail on my body. No, for me, I can touch any animal, but not a snake. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hello. It's heavy, eh? It's very heavy. Where are you? Where did you go? Oh, you're heavy. You're like a four-year-old child. Awesome. Awesome. 25 Kilogramm Schlange. Wiegt eine ganze Menge, aber fühlt sich irre an. When God created the earth, he gave humans and animals a plant-based diet. In heaven, it'll be like that again. The lion and the lamb will lie together. Death only came after sin and permission for eating animals after the flood when plant food was scarce. While one can wonder why God might have created scary creatures such as crocodiles, they would lose their scary reputation if you were sure that they wouldn't eat you. And then you could focus on other characteristics like their amazing strength and power. And yet, the way they nurtured their young makes you think, doesn't it? Bem, pessoal, chegamos ao fim de mais um episódio. Eu espero que você tenha gostado. Hoje passamos por experiências fascinantes, como brincar com os filhotinhos da chita, uh, tocar na cobra e ainda chegar pertinho do crocodilo. Eu espero que, assim como você viu quão maravilhoso são esses animais, Eu espero que você também pense quão maravilhoso é o nosso Criador. Fique com ele e a gente se vê da próxima vez.